On this edition of the Talk of the Town, we're joined by Brock Roberts from the Caldwell Volunteer Fire Department to tell us all about this year's Firemen's Festival. Also, we'll take you back to before the baseball season began in our conversation with Indians broadcaster Jim Rosenhaus and a couple of lovely ladies from Ohio Smiles join me. I'm talking about Melissa Hodum and Katie Cummings to tell us all about the upcoming free dentistry day, all for the kiddos. That's all on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios in downtown Cambridge, Ohio, it's Talk of the Town. And welcome on into a brand new edition of Talk of the Town from the U.S. Bank Studios here in beautiful downtown Cambridge. It is Jeremy Scott in the host chair once again with you. Producer Adam Green manning the cameras as we speak, pushing the buttons as he does just so well, with great aplomb, one might say. And happy to be, happy to be doing this once again. You can tell that the set hasn't changed. Obviously, you know, we kind of introduced this new era during last show, and now here I am. But this era is so new, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see behind us, Perry Baranich's name is still there. It's still there, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Reverend's name is still there. Forever in our hearts, the Reverend. Forever in our hosts, forever in our hearts, the host of Talk of the Town, or at least the original host of Talk of the Town. So, Perry, if you're watching this right now, thank you so much for all that you did all those years on Talk of the Town. I believe five years worth of hosting duties here on Talk of the Town. Five so. Years. I tell you, folks, it's a real pleasure for me to be here, and it's a pleasure for me to be joined on set by a guy who, I tell you, if you're from Noble County especially, you know, because I saw the post that Becky Reinhardt from KC105 put up whenever he was in her studio this week. I tell you, it garnered like 93 likes or something like that within a day's time, so it's probably well over 200 by this point. I am talking about from the Caldwell Volunteer Fire Department, Mr. Brock Roberts. Brock, pleasure to see you, my man. Howdy. And I see you again, too. Hey, let's talk about this, what you've got going on. Now, let me preface this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me preface this by saying that if you're watching this on Friday, you still have time to get on down to the Firemen's Festival down in Caldwell. If you're watching this on Friday or even Saturday, there is plenty going on. However, the Thursday events are canceled, obviously not a canceled, but they've already kind of come and gone when you're watching this as we speak. So just a little preface with that. So let's talk about some of the events going on. First of all, Friday, if people okay. are watching this on Friday, Friday, Brock. What all is coming up? Uh, Friday's still a pretty busy day. Uh, if you miss Thursday and you miss the uh, the 4-H parade and everything, Friday and Saturday there's still plenty of available festivities to be had. Uh, we have our 5K run that begins at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, they'll give out the awards uh, at 8. Uh, they have a one-mile fun run as well. It goes with that. Uh, the band Exit 25 will be taking the stage that evening as well. It's free to charge. Don't cost anything for the public. They're playing on in. the courthouse lawn, right? Yeah, they'll play right on the courthouse lawn. And again, it's free to the public. You can come down, listen to the band, uh, get you some good fair food, and uh, maybe play some games. We got Texas or uh, we got uh, five card stud there. We got some high low, plenty of games and, and amusement rides for the children as well. Yeah, and speaking of those amusement rides, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. From what I understand, you guys are using a company you've worked with in the past that's become a really tried and true tradition. Yeah, we, we're using Cromer uh, Amusements as, uh, again this year. Uh, we've had them, I think we're on about our sixth year with them. Uh, we've got a pretty good rapport with them. And, uh, you know, they, they keep telling us they're going to bring us some good rides again this year, so we're looking forward to it. I uh, can't wait to see what they pop up. We never know. Sometimes it's kind of, you know, we don't always know which ones we're getting, so they try to mix it up and always try to bring us at least one or two new different rides each year so it keeps it fresh, you know what I mean, for the kids. And, but, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to having them. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we preface this by saying we tape this on Tuesday. So, obviously, Brock legitimately does not know what kinds of rides they're bringing yet. <laughs> so it's going to be a surprise to him as we tape this. But... As you're watching this right now, Brock knows what kinds of rides are there. So it's kind of surreal how we're doing this, Brock, yeah. but I kind of <laughs> like it. Let's talk about the concessions. One of the big attractions of the Caldwell uh, Volunteer Fire Department's uh, Firemen's Festival is the concessions or are the concessions. What kinds of stuff can people expect to be eating and drinking? Yeah, our concessions are, are the, the biggest main fundraising part of the festival, actually. We don't make near much off the rides. Um, so what we make our money off of predominantly is the food and of course donations from you know area businesses uh, but you want to come down you can get you a cheeseburg a hot dog a coney dog chili cheese fries fries kielbasa bahama mamas lemonade corn on the cob i mean there's not a lot we don't have um, ice cream snow cones uh, popcorn it's all there and it's all at a very reasonable price uh, you can come down and eat a cheeseburger some french fries and a drink for 
the same amount, if not less, than what you can at any fast food chain. This is a huge fundraiser for you guys. This yeah, helps one of you largest. guys to be able to keep serving the community as you do, because anytime you're talking about a first responder, whether that be police, whether that be fire, in your case, whether that even be medical, like ambulance and whatnot, obviously there's a lot of wear and tear that the equipment takes, whether that be the vehicles themselves or some of the equipment that you guys use. What's some of the stuff that you guys need to replace on a pretty regular basis? Well, of course, I mean, first and foremost, we gotta have training. Uh, training's not free. Some stuff we can get online, but a lot of the training we have to pay for to have specialists come in to do it. Um, we're required by state now to have more regular training. Uh, also to pay for our fire apparatus and maintenance and upkeep of our apparatus, as well as gear. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand it, but to bring a new fireman on the department and put him in full enough gear where he can go into a burning structure fire is about $8,000. Oh, wow. So um, the bills add up and pile up quickly, and it's just a free service to our community. Uh, you know, we do it by volunteering, and we really depend on the community's, you know, uh, participation in our fundraisers to make it uh, happen. Right. And in return, they get cheaper insurance and stuff because we're, we're a well-rated fire department. Absolutely. Uh, we have really good equipment because we have a lot of good support in Noble County. So we talked about what's going on on Friday. Really quickly, can we go over Saturday's schedule of events? Sure. I do want to mention on Friday also we have a cool cash drawing for $1,000 at uh, Anderson Propane donated. It's a dollar a ticket or six for five, so you don't want to miss out on that either. It's a generous donation by yeah. them for sure. Uh, Saturday's our big day. Uh, everyone knows we got a matinee. It runs from 12 to 4. Um, for the rides, you come down and get an R band for the kids, let them ride for four hours, ride any of the rides they want. Uh, also, we'll have the annual car show, the ninth annual car show. That's always a big thing. Uh, this year, we're also going to do a cornhole tournament. It's going to start at one, registration begins at noon. Uh, and then, of course, the fireman's parade at six o'clock sharp. Uh, always a huge turnout, sometimes up to 200 entries. So it sounds to me like it's a full slate of events. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this on Friday or Saturday, you want to make sure that you get on down to Caldwell for the Caldwell Firemen's Festival. Because again, all of the money raised from this goes back into the fire department so that they can continue to do this thing. They've been doing this thing for 66 years now, this Firemen's Festival. This is a real big deal for them. So again, if you're watching Friday and Saturday, make sure you get on down there. If you're watching this after the fact, make sure that you get down there next year because I have a feeling it's going to be a great great time again next year. Well, Brock Roberts, hey, I appreciate you hey, coming up and doing this with time. us, and maybe we can get you on next year as well. Yeah. I would we'll love that look very forward much. To it. We'll be back with more Talk of the Town from the U.S. Bank Studios right here on YRP TV and also on Spectrum Cable. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew bring you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm and warmth. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place, place to live, work, and, and play. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash yrptv and be sure to subscribe. Back at U.S. Bank Studios, it's Jeremy Scott. It's Talk of the Town. And we are right in the midst of baseball season. As a matter of fact, we just got done with the All-Star break, and now it's the second half, and you can bet that it's going to be very exciting as we come down the home stretch. But before the season began, ABC Communications was lucky enough to sit down with one of the voices of the Cleveland Indians, Jim Rosenhaus. He came down, and he actually talked with us at Theo's Restaurant. And now we're going to take you back to our conversation with Jim Rosenhaus right here on Talk of the Town. I am sitting here having a piece of Theo's pie, a cup of coffee, 
and just talking some baseball with a guy who, I tell you, we don't get him in town very often, but when we do, we are very lucky to do so. And I am talking about one of the voices of the Cleveland Indians, Mr. Jim Rosenhaus. And Jim, you were an economics major back in your college days, and your minor was in business. So how does an econ major and business minor end up in broadcasting? And you did your homework, Jeremy. Thank you. Um, you know what? Eating a lot of pie usually does it. But I, you know, it, it's something that I wanted to do, and I got about halfway through college, and just thought, if you're ever going to follow your dream, that's the time to do it. So, was far enough along where I didn't want to transfer to a different school or anything like that. So stayed with it, got my degree, but I had a chance to work at the student station and where I went to school and uh, got some experience there, and, and everything worked out just fine. But it, it is odd for what I do to, to have those degrees as a major and a minor. So were you a DJ before you went into sports broadcasting? Um, no, actually it was uh, like news, a lot of radio news. I worked uh, my first job, actually a little bit of, of DJing on my first job was a morning show in upstate New York. Um, and then some high school football, basketball and, and baseball. And then worked radio news in New Jersey, just outside New York City. And that was strictly news, uh, and then was fortunate enough to get into baseball. So a little bit of everything before getting into baseball. And Jim, you're also a member of the Buffalo Bisons Hall of Fame. You lived in Buffalo, obviously, for a while. What is the proper way to do buffalo wings? Bone in, bone out, and rubber sauce. Uh, you got uh, definitely bone in, for sure. Uh, sauce, for sure. Like a, a good, whether it's the Anchor Bar, where they were originated, or Duff's is the other big one up there. You got to have like 39 different sauces. <laughs> 39 you, different sauces. Or what, you know, a million of them. Different varieties, different heat. Um, so at least there, that's how it's preferred. Have you found a place in Cleveland that rivals what they do in Buffalo? No, not yet. <laughs> um, but that, that's the beauty of, like, of traveling to, to different towns and things like that. Uh, everybody's known for something different. Um, Buffalo, it happens to be wings, and uh, you know, I'm not really Cleveland. You know, there's a lot of good spots in Cleveland too, but yeah, still searching uh, wing-wise to, to find that good one that, that you would have. And in Buffalo, I mean, just about every bar or restaurant, no matter what their main uh, bill of fare is, they still serve wings at in some form or another. And they're all awesome. Yeah, usually. Now, being that you are an Indians broadcaster, what is your opinion of the movie Major League? <laughs> That's a good one right there. Love it. Um, I, and from a broadcaster's perspective, I mean, Bob Uecker as Harry Doyle makes the movie. Absolutely. Um, but it is nice that, that they're not in as desperate straits as they were at the beginning of that movie. Um, they still, you know, last fall they played the Yankees in a big series in the playoffs. So it's kind of like the movie. Um, but love the movie. I mean, you can't go wrong with Major League. And uh, over the years, we've tried to get Charlie Sheen to come in and, and throw out a first pitch, and it hasn't quite worked out yet. But uh, Bob Uecker comes in every now and again with the Brewers. And how he is in that movie is kind of how he is in real life, which, which is pretty cool. Not too many embellishments. Though. No, he's, I mean, he's hilarious. So if they were to remake Major League, or at least modernize it, who would play Jim Rosenhaus? Who would you want to play Jim Rosenhaus? I'm not sure, but uh, you know what, you'd have to have Bob Uecker back, because his character, I think, made the movie. Um, I'm sure Tom although, Hamilton would be okay although, with that. Well, I, you know, Hammy would have to be in there, too, for sure. But uh, it'd be interesting if they did do a, what were they on, three or four? Yeah, they, they stopped making them? Three, yeah. And, then. yeah. and they all got worse as they went. I mean, they can't. <laughs> By the time they got to three, it wasn't good, but... Yeah, Pedro Serrano taking up voodoo. I just yeah. was never okay with if that. If they could ever get the, the original cast back together, it might work again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you do work with Tom Hamilton, obviously, and he's one of the dynamite voices in Major League Baseball. He's known all around the league. You always hear his calls on MLB Network and on ESPN whenever they're playing back clips of games, all that kind of thing. What have you learned from him in your career? Oh, gosh, um, a ton. And it's interesting, I, I worked 16 years in minor league baseball and finally got a chance to, to join the Indians and, and work in major league baseball. I think the tendency is sometimes you think you, you're you prepared and you know, you're ready to go, you know everything, that type of thing, but um, I was fortunate, like just growing up 
you know, I have parents who said, hey, you can always learn something from someone every day. And Tom's been wonderful in terms of preparation, uh, just being comfortable how to interact with players. And you do all that stuff in the minor leagues. But there's some finer points that are different at the major league level than they, they would have been at, at single A or triple A where I had worked. And uh, he's been a good friend and, and just a great example because he works as hard today as he did when he started, I think. Um, you know, still goes down and talks to guys on the field before the game, visits guys in the clubhouse, and, and that's essential. I mean, you can you can read all the stuff that I would read. It's out there. It's on the internet. You know, different media guides, things like that. But our job as broadcasters is to go where the fans can't, and then relay them the good stuff. And so that's why we go down to the clubhouse, talk to players, pick up on stories, what they're working on, things like that. And, and that's hopefully makes it a more entertaining broadcast. Hopefully, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I know he still does that, and, and I try and do the same thing. If we were to go on your phone right now and look at your playlist and see what the last song that you was that you listened to was, what would that be? Oh man, something country probably. Um, Not Luke Bryan, though. Putting him on the spot. Maybe a, maybe a little Jason Aldean. Maybe a, um, I'm trying to think of. Like Big Green Tractor era Jason Aldean or something a little bit more current? A little bit more current, although we did, uh, speaking of tractors, uh, did Joe Nichols do one? Uh, run some Joe Nichols. You got any Joe Nichols? Joe Nichols? Okay, yeah. I'll uh, tell tequila you Tequila makes her clothes call, fall there, off. There, there yeah, you that's go. That's a good one. Um, so yeah, but country, like I enjoy country, it's just, um, it's easy going, but you throw a little classic rock in there, Aerosmith, Rolling Stones, any of them are good. Hey, speaking um, our language here. And then to stay current with the kid, I, I have a 14 year old freshman in high school, you gotta have a little rap, hip hop type stuff in there, and plus our players, same thing. Uh, so you gotta have some of that. And then we have Latin players, so you gotta maybe dabble a little bit in, in the Latin American music, so. I try and be well-rounded. There you but go. But last one, like on the drive down, a little country board. All country, all the way. Well, Jim, thank you so much for taking some time to sit down, have a piece of Theo's pie and a cup of coffee with me. And we didn't even cover the team. And we didn't even cover <laughs> the team. Okay. That's okay. We, we like to go a little bit beyond just the superficial stuff. You know it. what? We have 162 games to worry about that coming up. That's right. Don't forget, folks, speaking of those 162 games, you can catch them all, all season long, on your home for Cleveland Indians Baseball 93 BNV. And don't forget to check out Tribe Time Tuesday featuring Jim Rosenhaus, as well as Jeff Reed and Fred McBride all season long on 93 BNV. And a big thanks again to Jim Rosenhaus and the Cleveland Indians for being affiliates of ABC Communications. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you can always hear the Cleveland Indians when you can't watch them on TV on your radio, 93.5 FM, better known as Classic Hits 93 BNV. We'll be back with more Talk of the Town right here on YRP TV and on Spectrum Cable. Talk of the Town will be right back. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. play. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to YourRadioPlace.com. 
back at the U.S. Bank Studios here in beautiful downtown Cambridge. This is Jeremy Scott with you. And joining me right now on set, ladies and gentlemen, not one, but two lovely ladies <laughs> from Ohio Smiles. And I tell you, Dr. Denise Ann Tallis always sends her best because right now we have got Melissa Hodum as well as Katie Cummings. Good to see you guys Good both. You. I know that this is something that you guys always look forward to. The reason that you are here right now, you are here for the annual Give Kids a Smile Day. And this is a big event. First First of all, Melissa, how about a little bit about the history of this event? Because this is something you guys have been doing for a long time now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it all started um, by two doctors back in 2002, um, J Dr. Jeff Dallin and Dr. Ray Storm. Um, they wanted to give back to the children in their community who may not get all the dental care they need. Um, the first year they did it, they helped out 400 people, so 400 children. Mm -hmm. And then that following year, 2003, they teamed up with the ADA, so the American Dental Association, to get um, nationwide coverage. Okay, so, so these guys were not from Cambridge then? Correct, okay. correct. No, unfortunately not. Um, but so with the nationwide coverage, other doctors throughout the country have been able to get into this program to help out kids as well. And then the numbers are now 5.5 million children who have been helped through this that's uh, amazing. Foundation. Yeah. Over the last 15 years. Right. So it's it's huge. It's a lot of people. And of course, it continues to grow because everyone is still doing these um, programs throughout the year as well. Right. And this isn't something that is done nationwide on the particular day you guys are doing this. It's Correct. done throughout the year. Correct. Yep. Um, you kind of sign up when you want to do it. And then we get banners and things like that sent to us. And then it's just kind of how you decide to promote it and what day you choose to do it on. Very cool. Now, Katie, when exactly <laughs> is this going to be taking place? This will be taking place on August 1st. It is a Wednesday. Um, we're actually catering more to the working parents of this year, so our hours are going to be from 4 o'clock p.m. until 8 o'clock. Yeah, until 8 o'clock p.m. Okay. Um, so in the after hours, and then it will be <coughs> taking place at our office, so 1500 Deer Path Drive, Cambridge, Ohio. And if anybody has any questions, you can definitely give us a call at 740-439-2501. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly you guys do during this mm -hmm. day. You obviously, you're serving the kiddos. So anybody under the age of 18 then? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. anybody under the age of 18? And what kinds of services do you offer on this day, Katie? So on this day, um, the kiddos will arrive with a parent and then they will sign up with our registration table and then from there they will get their teeth cleaned and then they will get um, an exam done by Dr. Antalis or Dr. Warner and then free fluoride will be placed after their visit and then on their way up front we will pick out some cupcakes or a balloon for them so we kind of just make it a big party for the kids because it can be a little scary going to the dental office so this day is perfect for little ones starting out with going to the dental office because to them it's just a big old party and they're going to see other kids there too doing really well. Okay, so mm -hmm. you kind of touched upon something that I wanted to get back to. Okay, you mentioned mm -hmm. the cupcakes and balloons. One of the big things I love about <laughs> coming to Ohio Smiles, <laughs> as these ladies well know from any time the radio station has been mm -hmm. down there, Otis Spunkmeyer mm -hmm. coming. Come on, we give it up for Otis because every time you leave Ohio <laughs> Smiles, you are always set up mm -hmm. with a cookie. You guys are actually doing something a little bit different on this day. What made you want to change it up from cookies to cupcakes? Just little kids, whenever they see the colorful cupcakes, that's really what draws their attention to and then the balloons so is Dr. Antalis baking these cupcakes at home are these home baked cupcakes <laughs> by Dr. Antalis Dr. Antalis if you're watching this you better do it no I'm just joking who exactly no, is actually we doing actually it? love giving back to our community with sticking to the hometown feel so we get all of our um, cupcakes from Kennedy's Bakery very cool so now I wanted to talk to Melissa this is not the only free dentistry day that you do throughout the year this one just happens to cater to the kiddos correct yeah we also do um, in February typically um, we do the dentistry from the heart which is for anyone who is 18 years or older. Um, so it's pretty much the same concept. We offer a few more services such as fillings or extractions that day as well as the cleanings. Um, but Dr. Antalish is just very passionate about giving back to her community so she wants to make sure she touches groups from you know zero age to Andre or you know however old you are she wants to make sure we get to everybody absolutely mm -hmm. and you guys you guys are a full service dentistry I mean mm -hmm. I don't even know how to put it I don't know if there's an exact term for a dental mm -hmm. office that does all the stuff mm -hmm. that you guys do but you guys really and truly are full service everything mm -hmm. from your basic cleanings to fillings all the way mm -hmm. on up through some very expensive and very very extensive procedures for mm -hmm. that matter right and we're talking about extractions obviously root canals you guys can pretty much do all 
all that stuff? Yeah, we can. Um, I mean, we do things such as like full mouth reconstructions where we can completely change your smile. Um, we work with patients who have sleep apnea to help them kind of get through the daily struggles mm -hmm. of that, migraines. Um, Katie's our assistant. She's <laughs> definitely more clinical yeah, than I am. So we also help our patients with T and J issues. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Natalis is very great at understanding what our patients need and then what they value. And then we just take their treatment plan from there and shape it into what all they need. We also do orthodontics in our office, um, cosmetic dentistry, of course the kids. She works very well with kids and adults, anybody who has any concerns, we really just Full service, full Cover family. Cover everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys accept most mm -hmm. kinds of insurance as well. We do accept mm -hmm. most insurances, and then we also have payment options in our office too, just to help out any way that we can. They are Ohio Smiles, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, if you have a kiddo or maybe you have a grandchild, maybe you're watching this and mm -hmm. the grandchild would like to go or the kiddo would like to go and get a cleaning and get a cupcake for that matter, Wednesday, August 1st is the day to do that. Again, the hours 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Make sure that you get down there probably about 3.30 or so yep, to start getting start in line. registration at 3.30. Very good. Well, I'll tell you what, Melissa Hodum and Katie Cummings. Guys, thank you so much for yeah, coming up. Thank you. It's a pleasure to thank see you, you both. Absolutely. And we will be back to wrap up this edition of Talk of the Town from the U.S. Bank Studios right here on Spectrum Cable as well as on YRP TV. Talk of the Town will be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Thanks again to all my guests on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the Caldwell Volunteer Fire Department, Brock Roberts telling us all about this year's Firemen's Festival. Folks, if you are watching this again on Friday or Saturday, try and make it down there because all the proceeds will go to benefit them and they'll be able to continue to serve the community. Again, they are one of the best fire departments in the state of Ohio. They've been doing this Firemen's Festival for over 60 years, so we want to make sure that they're able to do it for another 60 years. So again, if you're watching this on Friday or Saturday, make it down there if possible. And if you're watching it after that, hey, there's always next year, but try to make it down. Try to make a point to make it down next year. Thanks again also to Katie Cummings and to Melissa Hodum from Ohio Smiles and of course Dr. Denise Antalis for sending her minions up here to talk with us. Again folks, the Give Kids a Smile Day that is happening on Wednesday, August the 1st. And again, they are catering to the working parents. That's why they're doing it from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. So that if you are a working parent or maybe you're a working grandparent who happens to take care of your grandkids, you can still make it down there after work and still have plenty of time to make it down there. And again, they're actually featuring cupcakes and balloons this year. That's an exciting thing. Folks, if you haven't been to YourRadioPlace.com in recent times, you want to make sure that you make it there because that's where we always tell you about some of our upcoming promotions and some of the ongoing contests that we have on our radio airwaves. And again, for producer Adam Green, my name is Jeremy Scott, and thanks again to U.S. Bank for hosting Talk of the Town, and we'll see you next time. Make sure you have yourself a fantastic day and night.